Bill Shadok. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us, wherever you may be, whether it's in your cars, in your home, on the freeway, in traffic, going to work, coming from work. We do believe here at the House of Bill Shadok that everyone deserves a word from the Lord. Amen? Mm -hmm. What we want to talk about today is I want to jump right into it. I want to talk about God's benefits. It was about uh, of the Lord and his benefits. How many know that, that you know, we, we talk about uh, Christianity, we talk about other religions and a lot of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, um, I can talk about what God will do and what God will be doing, but how many know that God has benefits right now? Mm. How many know there's a benefit of serving the Lord right now? Amen? So let's talk about those benefits, not only benefits to come, but benefits right now. I don't know about you, but if I could not, but if I, if I could not experience my God right now, then I really would probably serve that God. Come on, somebody. Yeah, if I can experience my, see, I can experience my God every day. A buddy of mine, he was experiencing God. His car broke down, but guess what? He would, we would just begin to praise God through the entire day when he was working on his car. And God was showing up and showing up. See, that's experiencing your God. So, so, so if I can experience my God right now, then I, you may be serving the wrong God. Come on, somebody. Now, Psalms 103, Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. Psalms 103, Verses 1 through 5. Excuse me. Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. Very popular. Not too hard. But we're going to walk it out. We're going to walk it out. This is what the Bible says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. 3, who forgiveth all thy iniquity, who healeth all thy disease, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, glory, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the, like the eagle. That's enough right there, amen? Let's just walk these things out and talk about it. Because this is the benefits. We know somebody. This is the benefit. You can probably say, well, you know, I can be benefits. I ain't got to serve the Lord. No, you can't. Come on, somebody. You can't renounce God and expect God to heal you. Yeah, boy. Oh, Lord. Let me, okay, let me back up a little bit. Verse 1 says, bless the Lord. When I was younger, I didn't understand what the Bible said. How can we bless God? I mean, literally, how can you bless God? Uh, uh, I asked the elders that God blesses us. We can't bless God. You can't bless God. Doesn't have, God does not have anything that you want to need. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. I mean, well, you don't have anything. Let me say it like that. I'm sorry. You don't have anything that God wants to need. Think about it. He's God Almighty. Everything in His disposal in His hands. It's a blessing. Just it's a blessing for Him to just even want you here in life. That's where we give Him praise because He does not have to put breath in your body and wake you up every day. Come on, somebody. Let's be real. Yeah, when, 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 God, when God wakes you up every morning, is it beneficiary every day? If you're lying, because I mean, that, that, that means to say, every day he put breath in your body, you're telling me you never complain. You are 100% obedient. <laughs> you do his will day in and day out. You serve him to the maximum. Come on, somebody. That's what you're saying. But no, you know, we don't do that, do we? No, no, no. Sometimes we don't get up in the morning. No, we so, uh, Sometimes we don't even pray. Sometimes, hey, sometimes we curse somebody out first, then pray to him later. Come on, somebody. So what? So how are you benefiting him? Thank God he allows us to kneel, even though we don't deserve it. Thank God he allows us to breathe, even though we don't deserve it. But he loves us anyway. That's the God that we serve. So how can I bless the Lord? Bless, bless, bless. In the Hebrew, the word bless means to kneel, to bless God as an act of uh, uh, adoration. Um, vice versa, also to curse God of the king as treason. Let's say it like this. Blessing being curses. That's when I say, be careful who blesses you. 
Because see, the devil can bless you, but it's, but it's disguised as a curse. Okay? So, so, but in this context, to bless means to kneel as a, as a Lord, I adore you. So when we bless God, we're showing God gratitude, come on somebody, that we appreciate him for not only who he is, but what he's done. So Lord, I bless you. Come on somebody. How I many you can truly bless God? Paul says the least you can do. Is your body a little bit sacrifice? The least. Right now, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise up. I'm blessing God with my body. I'm using it as a sacrifice to give him praise, honor, and glory. That's so crazy because you got religious out there and tell them, don't say hallelujah. Uh come on. Don't, 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 don't give God any glory. Man, come on, man. Oh, I'm gonna go down that road, bro. CJ, Lord have mercy. Mm -mm -mm. Boy, so so it is so elementary. It's so elementary that 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 we can. I I I, I made a statement. I made a statement, and I'm gonna make it out publicly. I told him I didn't talk about CJ. If you don't have a doctrine in theology or religion, don't debate with me. And I advise don't debate with people. If you just read your book in the attic or in the basement. They said you got some revelation, and now you preach and teach on the sidewalk. <laughs> Ooh, glory. Show me some degree. Because you know why? I want to make sure that I'm talking to a sane person and that understands what they read. Ooh, come on, somebody. You realize sometimes you be arguing with crazy folk? Which, guess what, makes you look crazy that's just some advice thing be careful who you move glory man that teacher mom right there even outside the bible be careful who you're talking to who you arguing with some people are bona fide crazy and you're and you're sitting there arguing with them which kind of makes you crazy too don't waste your time say don't waste your time Jesus never, Jesus never, he never, he never, he didn't argue with somebody in the street. And he had plenty of time to do it. Didn't he? He had plenty of time to do it. He would choose his word wisely. <clears throat> because you're not going to run up on me and try to trap me into looking stupid. Because you're stupid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I had to get on my chest. <laughs> Oh my soul, it says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Are all of you able to bless the Lord? Are you able? Are you able to bless the Lord? Let me tell you something. If you're able to bless him, why not? Mm -hmm. Huh? You can, you, you can try to dictate the ways to do it. You can try to go into history the way they did it. You can try to tell me how to do it. But as long as I'm able to do it, I'm going to do it. Bless his holy name. Bless. Bless in the English means to consecrate or sanctify by a religious rite, make or, uh, or pronounce holy, to pronounce holy, to request of God the, uh, the bestowal of divine favor or that of a priest. How many know that we are royals? Uh, First Peter two and nine says that we are royal priesthood. See, when Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed His blood, then He gave you the right. Come on, somebody, to go to the throne of grace for yourself. No longer have to go through the priest. We don't have to go through the veil. Glory be to God. We go to God ourselves. Because now, now you're a royal priesthood. You have that right now. Thank God for his blood. Come on, somebody. No matter who you are. Um, you have to, you have the right to bless his name. As you can see, David Psalms, he says, Bless the Lord on my soul. Because he knew who he was. 
He was a child of God. He was David. He was a king. So he had every right to bless him. Let me tell you something. Wouldn't it amazing that everybody don't have a right to bless? Let me say it again. Everybody don't have the right to bless. See, you got to understand the reason that the reason that uh, David was able to bless the Lord because he had the right to do so. It was his right. He was in, he was in a position. See, a lot of us we want to bless God and wonder why God can't bless us because you're not in the right position. Preach, mm -hmm. Pastor. You can't you can't have the audacity to bless God when you can't even bless people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Preach, Pastor. See what we want to do. Ooh, ooh, glory, boy, that right there swept a lot of people off their feet. A lot of us want to go straight to God, when God says you got to get to my people first. Amen. I want somebody. Amen. See, we want to deal with God directly. We don't want to deal with His people. God said, "Well, if you can't deal with my people, you can't deal with me." Ooh, glory, I want somebody. You have to have. The right, okay, that is making it a lifestyle, not just a duty. When you bless His holy name, that's a lifestyle, because now, now, not only what I'm doing when I when I when I bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, that means that I wake up every day, His name is on my mind. Whatever I do, His name is in. It. Oh glory! I, I um, saints, you know, the angels of the Lord—they're not too busy watching what you do in public. They're watching what you do behind closed doors. Let me say it again: the angels—they're not too worried about what you do in public, because you know we all shine in public, right? If I knew you had your eyes on me all the time, I'd be right all the time. What am I doing with your eyes not on? The first thing, the first thing that goes through my mind, and, and if you're doing this, y'all need to stop it. Okay? Be outstanding. Let me tell you something. This is what this is what God does. This is how God does it. And this is what the angels are, 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 are looking at you. How many of you walk in the grocery store and see an item that fell off the shelf in the middle of the aisle? And you just go around. <laughs> I know sometimes you be tired. Sometimes you've been on your foot all day. Sometimes some of you, if you like me, I mean, my foot is, boy, my bones will be crooked and cracking. You just don't feel like bending down and picking it up. But if I love the Lord with all my soul, mm -hmm. I'm going to show that and give and bless his name because his name is on my mind. So how can I go around this product and not pick it up with Jesus on my mind. Amen. You see the plan? So no matter how much my bones hurt, no matter how much my body aches, I'm going to stop. I don't care who's watching because I know God is watching. And his name is on my mind. Amen. So what I do is I'm going to pick that item up and put it back on the shelf in the name of Jesus. Move somebody. Because I got his name. See, I want his name to be represented in a good way at all costs. You know, my child, that's real good right there. But how many times do we go through life and, and we know I ain't I don't care? Sometimes we don't care somebody looking at us. You can't have you can have a mentality in, 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 in the kingdom the same way you have a mentality in the world. See, in the world, what was what would one say? That ain't my job. You can't have that mentality when it comes to the kingdom of God. It is everyone's job. Well, that's what they get paid for. That's what you get paid for. I don't know about you, but spiritual paycheck a whole lot more hefty for somebody than flesh paycheck. Yeah. Well, they ought, they ought to pay me because I don't hit, I don't hit what those stores all the way around the world now. Because <laughs> all those going to condemn you. You see something in the middle of the house, you try to go around. 
food. I see people with their children. Go around and teach their children the same thing. Come on, mom, dad. Don't let your children see you do something productive. Not just for the kingdom of God, it's just for life. What is that? I don't care behind grown folk. I don't care behind grown folk. Guess what? God care behind you. Oh mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm good right here. <laughs> Glory. Aren't you grown? Yes. He cleans up your mess, doesn't he? I don't care behind nobody. Else. Okay, all right. What do God take that whole? What do we take that whole concept with you? I, I know about you, I know about you, but uh, I know there's a lot of people that can live in some mess. Mm. Verse 2 says it again. You gotta accept it. Please bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Some of us want his benefits without wanting him. Mm. Mm. See, you can't you, you can't get the benefits of the Lord without wanting the producer of the benefits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As Bishop Jakes taught all, all the time, I learned from him first. Which one is more important, the gifts or the gift mm-hmm. See, whenever I get a gift, I'm not excited because I got this gift. I'm excited because the gift that gave it to me. Mm-hmm. Which, one, which one is more important to you? The gift or the gift? I can throw that gift away. I can lose that gift. That gift go somewhere I can't even find it for. But guess what? The gift took. As long as the gifter is still there, that's all that matters. <clears throat> is he your Lord? Just ask yourself that. Is he your Lord? This is coming now. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Is he your Lord? Check this out. Oh, y'all hear that? Y'all, y'all know what that is? The woodpecker. <laughs> I don't know if y'all hear that. The woodpecker. We heard. Everybody was like, what is that? What, what, what is that? It's a woodpecker. What they do. Very fascinating, fascinating creatures. And when you see them, you're like, God, oh my God. They literally, they pick things that fast. You know, they pick things that fast. It's their yeah. main. But anyway, um, let's discuss the Lord. Because in order for you to say, bless the Lord with all my soul, then the Lord has to be the Lord of your life. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Let's discuss in the Old Testament, Lord, how we know Lord meant two different things. That's what we get to understand. In the Old Testament, Lord is self, uh, Hebrew, self-existence or eternal Jehovah, Jewish, national name of God, Jehovah, the Lord. Okay. In the New Testament, Lord, it means supreme in authority, controller. I like that. Controller, you know what I'm saying? By 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 by, uh, it's, it's, as a respectable title, of God, Master, Sir. So so now let's look at controller, one who regulates, directs, or restrains. Who is the controller in your life? Most of it. How many of you remember that movie with Adam with, with uh with Adam Channel on there with uh when he had the remote control and he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was controlling his life with the remote control. Yeah, click. Click. He was going to do click. Thank you, sir. That's what, in a nutshell, we have in reality in our lives. But that, that controller is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But he gives it to us. Most of the time. And, 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 and you got to know, you got to know how to control yourself through him. He gives us example. He gives us his word. He gives us his commandments. So now, how, how are you going to control? Me? How are you going to control your life? And sometimes we take God's scenario and we think we control ourselves better than anybody else. Mm-hmm. You can't control it better than because guess what? He is our controller. Mm-hmm. So in order for me to know how to control myself, I got to go to the controller to do so. Preach mm-hmm. myself. And that's how I know I'm doing a good job. I'm in the right path 
or I'm in the anointing of God because he is my controller, which means he is the Lord over my life. Come on, somebody. And if you control your own self and let me know God ain't the Lord of your life, huh? you are. Because you're doing what you want to do, when you want to do, and how you want to do it. How I many know it does not work that way, God? Come on, somebody. Who or what is ever is controlling, say like this, who or whatever is controlling you is your Lord. Let say it again. Who or whatever is controlling you is your Lord. If you're on drugs, drugs make you do strange things. Well, drugs is your Lord. Don't say you're serving Jesus, but drugs is making you do crazy stuff. <laughs> if you're, it does alcohol, you're alcoholic. And every time you drink alcohol, it makes you get drunk and you do crazy stuff. Well, guess what? Alcohol is your Lord. Don't say you're serving Jesus when alcohol makes you do strange things. Come on, somebody. You know what? You know why that's impossible? Because guess what? You can't have two Lords. Mm -mm -mm. It's got to be one Lord, and one somebody got to submit to somebody. I don't care what kind of I don't care what kind of relationship you got with God, but you got to submit. Because God is not going to submit to you. <laughs> Probably love him too, but no, he's, he's not a genie in the bottle. <laughs> he don't say he can give you three wishes and that's what he's going to do. That's not the God that we serve. Who or what? On your job, your spouse, your job. Some, some, some of our jobs are. I see people get on jobs and get promoted and, and man, and their whole life changed. And form around that job. They start, it started out, oh, it's a blessing I got this job. <laughs> it's a blessing I got this job, but now you're allowing your job to tear away from your family. Your recreation of life. Church. You just go to church every Wednesday and every, every Sunday. Oh, I got a new job, so now I can't make it. God understand. No, he don't. You ask that God bless you with a job to take away more time with him? Come on, saint. Listen carefully. If your life is out of control in any area, this means that you have the wrong Lord. I'll tell it again. If your life is out of control in any area, check your Lord. Check your Lord. It means that you have the wrong control in your head. I use the example of control of TV in our lives. Jesus is my controller. But if Jesus is not my controller, then unless someone else is or something else is. And it's real simple, saints. Get rid of that controller and get back Jesus. Come on, come on. Listen carefully. Forget not all his benefits. Benefits, Hebrew. It means treatment. Treatment. An act of good or ill, service, uh, benefit, deserts, deserving. I love that, desert. See, not only is it's cheeky, he says that I come that you might have what? Lives, that you might have more what? Abundant. Well, see, it, 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 it's, it's, it's just swell enough. I mean, it's so swell that he gives us life. Cause can, can he quit right then? I mean, I don't, I don't know about y'all, but at least I got life. I don't gotta have the fancy car, the fancy money, the the, 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 the fame, the fortune. I have none of that. I got life. That's enough. And then he takes care of me in life. That's enough. But then he says, and that you might have it more abundantly. See, more abundantly, all oh, that's benefits, y'all. I'm gonna say that's that's the dessert on top. I had had a good dessert a while. I think it, and so we go out long. I'm gonna give me some dessert tonight. Hello, somebody. Let them read about it. some desserts. <laughs> so his benefit serving the Lord is serving the Lord is enough. But now he says, since you chose to serve me and chose to be with me and chose me over to be control of your life, now I'm gonna give you some dessert. <laughs> and these are different desserts when you serve the Lord. Uh, verse 3 starts with iniquity, Hebrew. Perversity, uh, uh, moral, evil, mischief. <coughs> Perversity, 
a, a, a deliberate desire to behave in an unreasonable or an unacceptable way. Okay? That's your name. Your sin. Come on, somebody. He says that, verse 3 says that, who forgiveth all thy iniquities. He, he, he said, even when you even when you desire to be wrong, mm -hmm. come on, say glory. Even when you desire it, come on. Can I, can, can I get some real people out there? How many of you have some desire to do wrong? Yeah, I didn't. I, I done some stuff, man, in my life. I can't say the devil made me do it. Task made me do it. Oh no, task wanted to do it. And guess what? It felt good to task. Can you be real? Well, just been saying sometimes sin feels good. My Lord, it feels good. Not to my spirit, but to my flesh. That's when your flesh wants to take control. That's when you have you have to control your flesh. Because I, I, I can't live if I live by my flesh, I'm in trouble. But it's not me. I don't want to indulge in it every now and then. Come on, somebody. Be real. Be real. So, you, so even we have desire to do wrong. And God says, even though you know you're doing wrong and you go do wrong, guess what? I'm going to forgive you. Anyway. Hey, go. So what verse 3 says, who forgiveth all thy iniquities. All of them. The ones you want to do, the ones you didn't want to do. That's the God that we serve. You may not like it, but guess what? I believe it. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Because I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to spend the rest of my life not wanting to do wrong. I mean, no, but we got to listen to stuff. I go around the room right now. Throw. You know what I want to do? Man. All the right, way from chocolate cake to chocolate women. Come on, somebody. Huh? Man. I ain't forget you women eat chocolate men. <laughs> Vanilla and all in between. Come on, somebody. Yeah, we all have a want. To do wrong, the desire. And God said, even though you got that desire, guess what? Whether you go through it or not, He said, I'm still gonna forgive you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. The quality of being contrary or to accept standards or practice. He said, even if you choose the lower standard. He told me a long time ago, God says, I give you the ministry, but you gotta set the standard. And God said, even though we got some people that set the standard real low. We don't want to go high. Mm, too high. I don't, in other words, I don't want that. Excuse me, responsibility, God. God said, well, guess what? Even though you may not be productive, <laughs> but I forgive you anyway. My God. All. Forgive it. All. The word forgive it, he forgive it all. He just means he forgive what? The past, the present, and the future. <clears throat> Let me say that he forgive it all. Past, present, future. Past, present, future. Thank God we serve God that 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 that, that past, present, future. Because man can't do that. Yeah. I know people get divorced over a whole lot more life stuff. Hey, <laughs> glory, divorce. But God says I'm gonna stick with you. Yeah. Marry. Taking things to death do us part. Thank God. Mm -hmm. He healed all my diseases. He says, who healed what? All thy diseases. Healed Hebrew to, to cure. Repair. Make whole. Well, my cancer ain't came back. Uh, if it's healed, hmm. you have no more cancer. Well, got my, my diabetes under control. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're healed, you don't have diabetes. You know, that's the Hebrew heal it, it means to cure. You think God 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 put band-aids on disease? <laughs> God just makes you feel better so it come back again later. When you believe that God can heal your body, you better make sure you want to heal. Make sure you're using the correct terminology. I don't care what some doctors say. If you're healed by if you're healed with the strike, then you're healed. That means you're cured. Don't let anybody downside because they don't know how you cure. I don't care how God did it, but he did it. Come on, somebody. I don't worry about the hows and the winds and the where. That's God's problem. My problem is I need to be whole. 
You hear what does the healer did to make whole? That means that I'm not I'm not lacking anything anymore. My body's lined up with, with, with the way he created it, which was perfect in his image. Come on, somebody. Amen. We got to learn to accept those things. Quit reading into the diseases and the symptoms. Because it discourages us. That's what the enemy wants. Yes. Amen. Diseases. Uh uh are flu, physical disorder. It's not physical disorder, the disease. But God says they what? He healed us all. Amen. HIV. Come on, somebody. Amen. System. Gun and real. It's out there. This is very day. Cancer. Mental illness. Here's one for you. All time. You gotta love one of your family. They got all time. You know, you know, you know, you know that's a sign you can do. You need to start praying for your mind, right? What now? Nah. Lord, keep my mind. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm gonna recognize everything and everybody around me to the day that I close my eyes and be with you. Lord, I'm gonna recognize my grandchildren. Recognize my children, children, Father. I want to recognize my loved one. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Recognize my sister and my brother. At all times, I should not forget anything. And devil, you can't take my memories away from me. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. He says He healed all of them. He cured them. I'm not gonna put a bandaid on. I gotta, I gotta write sticky notes because I'm gonna lose them. Mister, come on, say, Jesus. Verse four. I love this one right here, Redeemer, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Redeemeth, the written Hebrew, to redeem, to be the next of kin, buy back. That's the best word looking for, buy back. When Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, that's what he did, he redeemed us. He bought us back. Like you said him more, but said him more about this right here. Uh, hello, somebody, he bought us back by getting the old back. <laughs> He went down to the gates of hell. Glory be to God. He didn't knock on the door. He kicked the door in. He rolled to the to forum area. And the forum area, the devil's secretary said, ah, may I help you? Glory be to God. And he said, yes, he can. I need to talk to the devil. Dr. Bill's above himself. Come on, somebody. And she said, right this way, sir. And he told the devil, she told the devil, devil, I don't know what it is. But it's hot as fifth grease in here. But this cold man, come on, somebody. They call him Cold Blue. His name is Jesus is in the city. And the devil said, Oh my God, what did he got for me? Don't he know I got all in soul? I got them all wrapped up right now in the name of Jesus. He said, No, nah, but I got a suitcase right here. Come on, somebody. And in the suitcase was receipts. I didn't say money, but the receipts. And the devil said, What are you doing all these receipts? He said, Because these are all my people. My God, I come to buy them. Back. Glory be to God. He said, well, where's your money at? He said, I ain't got no money. Glory. I ain't got no money. I don't got no credit card. I don't even need credit, bro, but I do got some blood. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God the blood. But why do you use blood? Because let me tell you something. God says that when I sent my only begotten son to die on the cross, Shed his blood, his perfect blood, to get you back from the enemy. Pull you back out of the gates of hell. He says, when I brought you out, I made sure can't nobody buy you back. No. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Hey, glory. When they were, man, Mr. Ooh, my God. Mm -hmm. it was his blood, saints. He says, you know, and you notice that he says that, that, that I paid it and I bought it with a price. Come on, somebody. He didn't, he just didn't only buy you back, but he bought you with a price. That's like going to the store and say, uh, you pay for your bubble gum, and then the, the scanner say, okay, now you owe this. Well, I just paid for it. No, you didn't. You paid for what the sticker says. Now you got to pay the price. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Lord. Mm -hmm. So not only did he pay the price, 
but then he brought you back with his blood. Thank you, Jesus. And you don't think the devil tried to test me? The devil mad as I don't know what right now. Three, he don't like you. Because see, the devil thought that he was going, okay, you can take him out now, but they're coming back. Who cool, glory. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Thank God I, I'm not coming back. I'm not going to heaven. I'm going to, heaven. I'm going to heaven, Father. Who glory. Thank you, Jesus. All what you've done for me, I accept it. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to heaven. Hell shall not see me. No more. Who glory. Who glory. After that, after he got you, he, he got you and your and, and, and your property back from the enemy. You heard what I said? You and your what? Oh glory. Come on now. Come on. Not only did he, not only did he buy you back, but that's your property. Come on. That's what he did in Egypt. That's what he did in Egypt. So come on now, now go get all the gold and, and silver and everything. Come on, bro, bring it back with you. Oh, glory. He crowned us. He crowned us. He crowned us to encircle for, for attack or protection. He crowned us. I love that. I love that. You know what it says? Who crowned thee with loving kindness. Loving kindness to prove beauty. Let's just say beauty. So not only did he buy you back, he bought you back, then he crowned you. See, 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 thank God I don't look like a slave no more. <laughs> thank God I don't look like the issues that I got, because guess what? I don't know about you, but I still got issues. Come on, somebody. How I many you know God still we got still working on some things inside of you? Come on, somebody. But guess what? While he's working on you, you don't have to look the way you used to. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father. My God. He says, Oh, I love this is mercy. He crowned you with loving kindness, which is beauty, and his tender mercy, compassion, tender. Very loving. He encircled us with beauty and gentle compassion to protect us. He made us the way we were originally created. Amen. Amen. Even though you tried to mess up, guys, I'm going to bring you back. <laughs> but all you've been through, guys, I just brought you back Glory to the way you once created. Just like babies. That's the reason. If you think about this, Jesus said that you got to be born of what? It makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> they thought you got to go back to your mama's womb. Now, God said, I got to do, I got to go through surgery. I got to go through some procedures. I got to take my own begotten son. I got to go down to the gates of hell. I got to do some things that was really jacked up, not only by you, but by your father's father. Come on, somebody. Also, I can get you back to the way you were supposed to really be. Thank God that's what he did. In verse 5, who satisfies thy mouth with good things. Good, Hebrew, beautiful, best, balance, better. better. Mouth in the sense of trappings. Finally, outfit. I like this. Headstall. 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 Decoration. So guess what? He says that. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things. That means that your mouth should be decorating the kingdom of God. Amen. When you give God praise. And verse 1 says when you bless his on somebody. Amen. Amen. He said, by doing so, that also that thy youth is renewed. Like, come on, somebody. Amen. How many know the older you get, the younger you can actually feel? Mm-hmm. And you know somebody, man, when they was in the street, it just all raggedy and tore down, when they get saved, <laughs> they then get converted to older life to the put they like to Christ. They get all young, they look better, the skin pores opening up and everything is lovely because they've come back to their originality. Come on, somebody. Did some of us stay out there too long <laughs> and get decrypted? <laughs> then kind of come to Jesus on cane and, <laughs> and walk. <up. laughs> you play out there a little bit too long. <laughs> but you're saved now. Hey, glory <laughs> to God. But don't play out that too long, saying, Come on, somebody. Mm-hmm. These are some of the benefits. Mm-hmm. Hope you get this. This is the benefits of serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, if you, if you don't have any of these benefits, then with what uses religion you talking about, with what uses, what tribe you think you come from, whatever it is, mm-hmm. make sure you get the benefits of Christ, the benefits of loving the Lord and serving the Lord according to His purpose. Amen. 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 By your hands. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this glory opportunity, Father. Holy Ghost, I ask right now that you uh, 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 you extend these benefits to your people, Father. 
allow them to know it and believe, Father, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. That, that they, they don't have to succumb to sickness and diseases. You, you've conquered it all, Father. You've given us the cure. And that cure is the blood through your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, we, we thank you for and we bless you, Father. We kneel before you. We give you all the honor, praise, and glory. Lord, as you become the controller in our lives, <laughs> we set all controllers down and we pick up you, Father. You let us know where you want us to go. You let us know which way uh, you want us to go, where you want us to be, what you want us to do. Control my life, Father, right now. And to those that want you to control theirs, I stand into the gap as you give us the grace and the mercy to live our lives and do so, Father. This is what I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Once again, we love you. Not a thing you can do about it. April is here, and uh, I can truly say big things going down in April. Um, not because it's my birthday month, but it's because uh, it's just hey, man. Let's put that in there. No, you know, we're like giving church. We give for the back now. <laughs> now, but if you, if you don't know about it, in, in the season of April, you got to understand that it's supposed to rain a lot in April. And it does. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it's more in March, in the March. But uh, April and May is a rainy season. So what does that mean? That means that Anytime that rain has come, that's the way of God to bless. Amen. So we may see physical rain outside, but how many know there's a spiritual rain on the on the kingdom, kingdom of God? And trust me, I believe April is a rainy season. If you know me, you know me as a pastor. I've been preaching this all a very long time. It always happens. Man, my people get blessed in April. I don't want something about it, but it's just a it's just a blessing season in April. Amen. So this is the time for you to reach out and expect some things. Expect God to do big things in your life. Amen. Once again, we're giving church here at the house of God. We give, we give a cash out, dollar sign, cash out, his church. H-E-S-C-H-U-R-C-H, his church. The number two is on the screen right now. And you feel free to give. We give to the poor. <coughs> Feed the hungry. We got a youth experience coming on this, um, I want to say, next week. Uh, I have some meetings to go to to give us more information, put out a platform. I know time is winding down, but we will do something. We're just putting it together for the youth, taking our time to try to hear from God. And, uh, and we're going to do something for the youth before they go back to school. No matter what it may be, we're, we're going to do something, amen? Mm -hmm. That's the thing for, for this year, and then we're going to go into the next season, which is the holiday, and do some more things and feed the homeless and, and try to get a consistency going, amen? Once again, uh, that's what we do. That's what your, <coughs> your offerings, your blessings, your tithe, whatever you do, whatever you give, it goes toward us and the kingdom of God, uh, performing those activities in the kingdom of God, amen? Mm -hmm. And if you say you give, you know, I, I like to say, if you pay your tithe off, you'll never have to go become a store and people begging for money. And you can't say, uh, uh, you're not doing anything. But yeah, uh, I got an organization. We do all of that, you know. Amen. Now, if you got to go and give, but don't feel bad if you don't give to those people. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to ring their bells every every holiday. <laughs> and they're going to beg for money every 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 uh, street corner. Amen. Yeah. But glory to God, we don't have to do that. But we try to give more than we have received. Amen. Yeah. So, once again, just the information. Uh, feel free to join us every Wednesday, every Wednesday, off the wall, you know, Sunday morning services, uh, 10 a.m. Let's get 10 a.m. 10, 10 a.m. You know, 10 or 11. Which one is it? 10. 10. 10 a.m. Sunday morning, we'll start popping up 10 a.m. Uh, uh, start trying to be on time, hey, amen. <laughs> I see y'all see my sound man laughing at me, you know what I'm saying? See this mic, you know, see this gonna work, but I won't prove it wrong. I won't prove it wrong. So y'all pray for me, man. And, and, and sometimes it's, like, uh, it's just that. You know, technology difficulties and things of that nature. Hey, Amen. But, you know, but we're going to try our best. We just start getting started at nine. We say 10, so hey, we got to get crunk at nine o'clock. Hey, be ready. It was an hour. We we'll put on and do what we got to do. Hey, Amen. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to get that going every, every every Sunday morning and give you a, a, a more time. Hey, but once again, God bless you. We love you. And I think you can do about it. Until next time, peace, love, joy, shalom. <laughs>